All right, I've been on a bit of a mission this morning to find an intersection that I can fly my drone over at least somewhere nearby. Uh, I've gone to about three already this morning and all the parks that were close by turned out not to be parks. China builds things so quickly that quite often you go to a place and then it doesn't exist. It's been turned into like an apartment complex or a mall, uh, which is really frustrating. This one does exist and I found the intersection. It looks pretty impressive, but um, I think it's going to look more impressive when I get the drone up. So let's do that. G'day guys, so it's 20 here and welcome back to Sichuan Province. It's been a couple of weeks and it is damn good to be back. We are tackling some pretty big projects in this episode. Actually, over the next couple of episodes, we're doing some big road layouts and interchange episodes, as you can probably tell by the thumbnail and the intro. We're going to be using the new mod and um, assets pack, well, the road pack by Amamlia, and I think there's another couple of guys who are involved in that. It's pretty epic, it's massive takes me ages to get my head around it and we will get into that very shortly but before I do some serious talk for a second last episode I had to disable the comment section which I've never done before and I hope I don't have to disable it again I most probably won't ever have to because the sort of videos that I make don't really encourage those sort of comments but last episode I was getting a lot of coronavirus comments and look I understand that it is hot topic at the moment it's all on the internet it's all in the news but I would really love it if I had no more of those comments, please. Uh, a lot of people have died from that virus and it has affected a lot of people and I just don't think it's something to be made light of. So um, please respect my decision by not making any more of those sort of comments. Um, honestly, I wasn't getting anything too bad. Um, I just think that in general, I would much prefer um, comments that were about the cities that I'm building or inspiration or um, talking about other things like that so that we usually get. So um, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for understanding. Um, I'm just assuming you're understanding, <laughs> obviously, but yes, I appreciate it. I'm not going to be disabling the comments in this video. I'm just going to be really mindful of um, keeping track of the comments that I'm getting just so that we're not getting those sort of comments. So yes, bit of an update on there. Anyway, getting on to things that are more interesting, which is what I'm doing. At least I, I assume they're interesting. <laughs> I hope it's interesting. Um, basically, I've this is me like giving a bit of a go of the new CSUR mod. This is an insane mod that was released. I think a couple of months ago, it's been in beta for a while, just been um, released to people who are part of that beta project. And now that it's finally on the workshop, I um, have grabbed it and just been playing around with it. It is very intimidating, it is very tricky to use, but once you get the hang of it, this mod is incredibly powerful. And the amount of roads that you have to choose from when it comes to intersections and creating these really great ramps um, are really quite amazing. I've left a tutorial in the description below, um, actually I might even comment below because it's actually helped me out a lot when it comes to um, putting together these intersections. Um, I thought to get the hang of it though, I'd placed down a couple of pre-built intersections which you can see that I've been placing down um, over the last couple of minutes. Um, that's just to give me a bit of an idea of what I, is possible in these areas and also so that I can um, see how this mod works and check out some of the roads that they used um, to create these intersections. Um, also, it's because I don't really want to be creating every single intersection on this map. I am a massive fan of just grabbing great looking intersections from the workshop. I think pe a lot of people make better intersections than I do and I don't really want to just be wasting every single... I mean, if I was to build every intersection on this map, I wouldn't build anything else. So, uh, yeah, I've got to try and pick and choose which intersections I want to build and which intersections that I want to just place down and then we'll move on to other areas because this, this city is all about expanding out, building big stuff and if I was going to focus on every little bit of detail, I would get nowhere. But we do get into a big intersection um, a little bit further on in this episode. 
So like I said, we are expanding out quite a lot in this episode. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, I really wanted to um, build up the population and make the city look just that much bigger because we have been doing a lot of detail work lately and I just think that I would like to um, start expanding out in some areas. The last episode I think was a really good uh, explanation of how I'm going to be expanding out a lot of the areas in this map. So if you haven't seen that episode I highly suggest you do because I think it gives a pretty good idea of how I'm going to be tackling this project. But basically because we are building such a big city and it is very different to the types of cities that you will um, typically see in like western countries like Australia and America and um, Canada and the, in, even in Europe the um the suburbs just aren't the same and particularly like around the downtown area of um of Chongqing which is a city that we're based in it off it's just like apartment complex actually pretty much all of China there is most people live in these um big apartment complexes and they're just really quite interesting the way that they're laid out I talk a lot about this in the um last episode and how I'm going to be expanding out all these areas because if I was going to detail all these areas, it just, I'd go nuts, basically. And I also think that it's going to make for some really boring episodes if I'm just building, like, in detail in the same apartment complex. So instead, I'm going to be doing some very, um, quick blocks. And I'm going to be doing most of them off camera so that you don't really have to sit through them. Uh, and that's how I'm going to be expanding out a lot of the areas. Because you can actually see that I, in this episode, we actually build a lot in this episode, but only a bit of it is on camera. Uh, the, the rest of it, I just build off camera and the sort of buildings that I do is very much the style of the buildings that I release the complexes I build in the last episode. So if you want to see that, it's, yeah, the last one. <laughs> I was going to say it's in the description below, but I'm not going to remember to do that. So now I'm starting to work with the CSUR mod and this is the mod component of this whole expansion, this whole road expansion. There's a whole bunch of different um, components to this. So there's the mod and there's all the different roads. There's like the ramps and the, uh, I can't remember what's the other one called, I guess. There's a whole bunch of different types of roads you can choose from. I'm not going to go into any detail on how to use these. Uh, like I said before, the best way to learn how to use these is by watching the tutorial made by, um, I'm pretty sure it's by Amamalia. Uh, they have created a really good tutorial and I highly suggest looking at that if you want to see how to use these. Um, but the really nice thing about this mod is that you are, uh, it makes it a lot easier to actually find the roads that you want to use rather than having to scroll through all these. And that's good because I'm pretty sure there's like 400 or something different roads to choose from. And uh, th that actually, I, I'm pretty sure there's more than that. Um, it's crazy how many roads there are. And the reason why there are so many roads in this collection is because the whole mod is basically created so that you can create these really complicated and realistic looking intersections and junctions and ramps so that they all align up really nicely. This is like, you would not be able to achieve anything that looks like this in the vanilla version. So this is really only for people who um, are willing to dedicate themselves to this. And plus, like I said, there's like 400 different roads. So this is not for your average computer. This is, you need a pretty decent beast of a computer to um, actually uh, download and run all these. Um, in saying that, and this might take you by surprise, but I actually get a better frame rate in Sichuan province than I do in Marble Mountain, which is pretty insane. And I've actually been working on like a couple of different projects that are like vanilla based ones. And when I did, um, when I've gone to like a bit of detail in those areas, I get a really bad frame rate. Whereas in Sichuan province, I actually get a really nice frame rate. So I think that really just goes to show that it's not like mods aren't just the factor of, um, you know, bad performance. It's really about how you build your cities. And I think I actually might make a full tutorial on how um, how best to create cities so that um, your FPS is um, at a decent decent rate. Though I'm no expert, but I think I know a couple of things. So let me know if you're interested in that, then I might actually create it. Uh, so we are creating this intersection um, that is like the focus for this episode. And the reason why I wanted to put it here is basically we have this area where um, there's like this highway that is sort of like stretching from one end of the city to the other, um, going like completely bypassing the city. And then we also have another road that is going from the downtown and stretches across a river and it's like a very busy highway and you'll see how busy it gets um, eventually. 
and they are needed there to be some sort of junction so that these guys could actually make uh, get access to um, all these housing complexes and these um, facilities in this area so this is actually a pretty important uh, junction and I needed it to be like not only like looking pretty decent but it had to function well otherwise we're gonna get a crazy amount of traffic and it functions really well I'm so happy about that because like I said there's nothing worse than putting a lot of effort into a intersection and then all of a sudden everything just grinds to a halt so I'm pretty happy that it's uh, working quite well but I do have to admit the way that I am putting this together it's very clunky like this is me getting used to this mod and all these assets I I, I do not consider myself an expert and even after the next episode where I build probably a more sophisticated looking um, interchange with a little bit more ease yeah this my skills are just not great <laughs> I think there's a lot of people doing a much better job at um, creating these um, if you have downloaded the mods um, by the way and all the assets that go with it let me know I want to know if you have created any cool looking um, interchanges and you can also get in touch via Twitter if you want to tweet at me. I um, have a Twitter account where I usually do some um, sneak peeks into the next episodes and announcements for streams if I'm going to be going live. Um, Discord's also a great place to reach me too. There's always some great conversations and, su and suggestions. Try and get that word out. Um, yeah, follow me on those things. Links to them in the description below. But I would be really curious to see what you guys are doing with these um, with these assets. They're like I said, amazingly powerful, but I haven't seen too many people using them. Uh, don't be afraid. I was very afraid <laughs> of getting into them, uh, to be honest. But when you do get the hang of it, man, the interchanges just turn out so great. And they function really nicely. I think, though, when you do create them, it, they're sort of more tailored for, I guess, like Chinese-style cities. Or I think they probably work for a lot of other Asian-style cities. Uh, but, you know, we, in Australia, we don't build intersections like this so I guess you really have to be sort of building that sort of a style of city although maybe not maybe you can squeeze it into um, a European build <laughs> I think I might look a bit out of place there um, but you can sort of see me getting the hang of the mod uh, using it a little bit more effectively um, if that um, and you can see how many different roads there are like so many different roads to choose from and basically the mod allows you to um, you know choose the type of lanes that you are using for this road and then match them up so that they fit to um, the right types of roads because uh, there's you know a whole bunch of different roads that are going in certain directions and crossing lanes and so many different classifications you know for what is such a complicated thing to do the mod is actually pretty well tailored so that it um, does does give you a pretty good indication of what to do now, I actually just realized that I haven't really spoken too much about the inspiration for this interchange. And I guess that's probably because I'm not really taking inspiration from any particular interchange in China. This is um, mostly just me figuring out the road layouts for this area and also working with this mod. But I guess I was taking inspiration from different interchanges that I did see in China. Uh, the types of intersections that you'd usually see in like the downtown or areas that were highly dense with buildings because the way that they have to create these things, it's they usually like pretty much demolish this whole block and this whole area and then they build these intersections. But then in Chengdu or in, even in Chongqing, there's not really room or they're not able to actually demolish so much of the land or the buildings or the pre-existing structures. So they actually have to just work away, they work their work their way. Ah, oh, really having a hard time here work their way around um, these buildings and the landscape and that's really quite tricky and this landscape you can probably tell that's not on just like a flat playing field I am working again with quite an elevated landscape that I had to sort of lower a little bit to um, make this work but yeah the intersections in China are just insane uh, the engineering skills over there are just um, on a different level uh, I know that it takes you know what would take Australia like I don't know three years to build in China it's like six months uh, and I think that really that really shows in some of these structures they're pretty insane and you can tell that they've just been built really quite quickly uh, so uh, you know again not really taking inspiration of anything in particular but I do think that this really is quite reminiscent of the types of intersections in Chongqing and um, being so complicated and they're kind of like spaghetti 
you know, just, just like all intertwined and you don't really know where um, the end of the ramp is or end of the road is. It's um, just such a mess of um, roads that are, uh, yeah, I just really love it. There's actually this intersection that I am, I really, really love. Uh, I, I got to experience it on my way back. So on my way to the airport and I think it was like really, really rainy at this at the time when I went over it. So I didn't get to get any good footage of it. Um, it has a name, I forget the name of it, but it is like a famous intersection for just being like insane. I think there's probably like five highways that meet this one spot and I, I just would have no idea where to go. <laughs> you know, like I'm so glad I was in a taxi and not driving because um, I just have no idea where to go when I hit something like this. But I'm pretty sure this is like one of the most complicated inter intersections in the world. And I think that the roads layout that I am creating in um, this build, I think is pretty complicated as well. Um, it was actually my intention to fly my drone over that intersection and actually get some footage and try to rebuild something that was similar in um, this project. But I didn't, I didn't get out there. Um, the reason being is it was kind of far away from the downtown and what I thought was an area that I could fly, it also sort of seemed like it was a bit close to the airport. I'm pretty sure that was like directly underneath the flight path. So it might look like I did some pretty risky flies in China, but I always obey by the rules. Um, yeah, last thing I want to do is get arrested while overseas. So yeah, unfortunately couldn't fly around there and there wasn't really any good spots to take any videos. And the last time I did go, it was raining a fair bit. So unfortunately there was only a small amount of times where I could fly, but luckily we do have Google Earth, so we can check out some cool intersections on there. I think the cool thing about this particular intersection that I'm creating is this this inside road that um that connects up to this intersection, like this smaller intersection down here, and then when it um sort of branches off into the big interchange, I just think that's like a really I really love that. There's, there's like no way you could create something like that just using the vanilla road. So you can sort of see the use for these sort of roads. They, um, they allow you to create some very unusual and very interesting um, layouts that you just could not do if you were trying to do this in the vanilla game. Now it looks like we're starting to build the areas around the intersection because I didn't want to just build just the intersection and call it a day. I sort of thought, you know, we're going to give it a bit of context, going to expand out the city a bit more so you can sort of see how big these episodes can get. Um, if I was actually leave all the footage in these episodes, that the episode would be massive, probably like twice the length. So there's a lot of deleted footage and, you know, I probably, <laughs> I probably should um, start making a slightly smaller episodes if I want to start getting this, um, getting a bit more videos out on a regular basis. But basically, I wanted to um, give a little bit of um, character to this area and start um, expanding out a couple of the residential areas. Um, I also thought this would be a good spot for the, um, the above grounds, the the metro line, the train line, and yeah, you can see that it's over, it's elevated over the road, which um, works really well just to save a bit of space, which is very much needed in a um, in a city like this. And um, I'm now starting to work on like some roads that are going to snake its way around this hillside or this mountainside. So I actually really love this highway that um that stretches along this mountain in um, Chongqing. It's like really quite an awesome looking highway because it just hugs this mountainside and you can pretty much see it anywhere you look um, when you're like looking out in this direction. Uh, it's really cool. It's really cool and it's like a really nice spot and this whole mountain range as well. It sort of like acts as like this barrier to um you know the rest of the rest of Chongqing, because I guess there are more, there's more city beyond this. But, um, you know, when you're in the downtown, which is pretty close to this mountain range, and you look out, all you can see is this, you know, you can see houses, and you can see, um, you know, the river and the roads, but then you can also see this big mountain range, and it kind of looks like the city ends there, and I wanted the same thing in my city too. Uh, yeah, so pretty much copying the same road layout for that area because I really like I always knew that I wanted to create this um this highway that hugged that mountain range and it's also a really effective way of getting traffic out of the city. Even though I actually have enabled uh, I think it might be the heavy traffic mod, so I'm actually you're actually seeing a lot more traffic than you usually would, and there's no despawn too. So I'm actually cranking up the traffic quite a lot um, mostly for 
your viewing pleasure, <laughs> you know, because, you know, if I was going to try and um, play the game and make it easier for myself, I'd just play it just normally. But I just think it looks better when you're seeing lots and lots of cars driving around. So you can sort of imagine that, like, if I was just to um, let the regular traffic drive around this intersection, it would be functioning even better. But even with, like, crazy mods that allow um, more traffic to be enabled, it's handling itself pretty well, and now that we, now that you can actually see the simulation running, um, I just think that this is probably the best time to be building right now, um, because you can see all the cars like driving around. I really love it. Uh, now, just filling in the gaps, placing down a whole bunch of these apartment complexes, and um, you can see they're very, you know, it's pretty much like copy and paste, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm copying and pasting, but man that's the sort of houses that they have over there it's very much a um, copy and paste sort of a place a little bit of a rhyme there uh, but I do really love it because it means that I can actually uh, create these areas with a much with much more ease um, pretty much my formula is just pick a building copy and paste it place down a couple of parks and trees and then that's pretty much it um, not going to a huge amount of detail in these areas. There's areas that we will be focusing on in detail and there's other areas that we will not like this area. Um, and then I thought this would be a good spot for a construction site. There are huge amounts of construction sites in China. Uh, pretty much everywhere is under construction. <laughs> well, it pretty much feels like it's, um, you know, you go to a park and you're like, oh, I'm just going to fly in this park. And then all of a sudden there's like a construction site and you're like, okay, I won't fly in this park. Then you go to another place. Oh, I'm going to fly here. And then there's like a big row of apartments. You're like, what the hell? Like this was meant to be a park. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty nuts how quickly things pop up. But I um, would like to do a whole episode just based on construction sites and um, using a lot of the construction assets, just like doing like massive construction pits and I'm even tempted and if you've listened until the very end of this episode, which you guys have, I guess, I would love your comments. I'm sort of tempted to make the tallest building in this city to be under construction and have the building sites towering over some of the other bigger buildings. Let me know in the comment section. That way I'll also know if you guys have listened and watched the entire episode. But on that note, this episode is pretty much finished. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Much, much appreciated. Sichuan Province will be back next week when we will be tackling another area of expansion, another massive intersection that I think that I probably do a much better job at creating. But um, that episode is actually mostly on me just expanding out a big bulk of area and pretty much doubling the population, which is pretty nuts. So yeah, it's a good episode and it'll be out next weekend. But thank you guys so much for watching this one and until next week, have a good one and I'll see you in the next video. See you later.